Yael, is that true? Is social media much more of a threat than, than television could have ever been? I would argue no, and I think there are many benefits of social media that have been around now that we've been able to research it and understand it. And we also have to understand that this is, as you kind of mentioned, Andrea, it's the latest iteration of technology. It is the way that we're meeting friends in which we're really trying to post our lives. And we're actually able to gain new functions. We're able to learn new things. And I think the, the fears that I have is that if we have more of these uh, sort of draconian bills, we're going to gatekeep an entire generation from using not just the internet, but the future of digital technology. Uh, when I was a younger person, 12 to 14, 15 years old, I was able to learn about the internet, about HTML, doing websites. If we look at a lot of the privacy bills that have been introduced in states like Arkansas or things that are being discussed in Washington, D.C., we would effectively have a generation that wouldn't be allowed to do the same things that I was. I do think, however, I will agree with my fellow panelists, there is a duty and there's an important duty for parents. I'm a father myself. I think it is something very important. It is something that the American Psychological Association and Mitch, they've been able to point out, parents do have a special duty to ensure that kids are safe online, that they're on the right platforms, that they're checking that. Uh, again, we want to be sure that they're able to use the great technologies of the future. We're talking about AI each and every day. If kids are not able to get online to learn, if they're not able to interact with technology, with social media profiles, how are they supposed to be prepared for the next generation and what technology will bring? Interesting point. And as you mentioned, Mitch, or Yael, sorry, the uh, the latest iteration post-TV, you know, you will have to remember when Congress, you know, and Tipper Gore actually thought that they had to protect us from satanic death metal, gangster rap. You know, music was a serious threat. There needed to be warning labels on albums that we hear music, that music today, and we laugh because it was actually kind of funny. But wow, was that a movement. Do you think there are similarities today with how people see social media? Absolutely. There's a moral panic around every single corner, and it happens every single generation, and we're sort of in the throes of it right now. I think uh, one thing I'm most fearful of, though, is that we have this moral panic. Uh, we have a lot of tools. Legislators are uh, very active on this, and hopefully they will try to pass some bills. And I think we, we might actually go to a part where not only our privacy, but our security uh, will also be at threat here. Because a lot of the bills that mention many of the uh, protecting online kids, we have this in Arkansas, you know, they mention sending your biometrics, sending pictures to these platforms. Uh, so we're really talking about taking away the idea of the anonymous internet where you can be safe and secure online, where we're safeguarding privacy. I think a lot of that is putting way too much onus on private platforms. And it's something that the government should really not have its hand in. We need parental responsibility. We also need great competition. And yeah, we do need great innovation to figure out what those platforms will be. What will the technologies be in the future? I think that's a better way to do it. If we want to talk about legislative action, let's talk about a national online privacy bill. We don't have one in the United States. They have them in other countries or other blocks of the world. That might be a better route to take than trying to gatekeep our kids from getting online. Mitch, I can see you agree with, with a lot of what you heard there. But Josh, let me come to you because I want to pick up on the potential benefits for kids, especially those who suffer mm -hmm. from, you know, crippling shyness, social awkwardness. They find communities online that are life-changing for them. So there's a serious contingent, and I'm not sure how much real research has been done into it to try and give numbers on this. It's difficult. Yael, does that sound fair? I, I think there are any kind of arguments you can make for literacy online, and I think it is something very important, and there are a lot of institutions that provide that. It's something that we could integrate into the schooling system. Uh, but if we're talking about you know, trying to segment populations on social media more and more, uh, we're just kind of adding on more and more layers of complexity to a lot of the online platforms, which realistically what we're going to do in an economic and innovative sense is really just give a lot of hands up to the larger tech platforms, which is kind of what I fear the most. I'd like to have a great innovative startup world. A lot of the apps that kids are using today are apps that don't even, they're not even founded in the United States. They're apps like TikTok, they're apps like Be Real. Uh, there's a lot of these app, that apps that are kind of being promoted to children, being promoted to younger people uh, that are not based in the United States, likely will not follow these laws. And if we're not going to have great innovative setups, laws, policies in the United States, we could see a lot of innovation that's happening abroad, and they're not going to follow any of these American rules. I think that's what I fear the most. We need to make sure that we keep that innovation there, not just for kids online. We need to have that private education. 
but also make these platforms usable for the vast majority of adults who also have great use for all of these platforms, who use them professionally. They have businesses. They connect with their friends, with their colleagues. Uh, we have to think about that as well. We can't just segment and gatekeep all parts of the internet. I know there, there are great studies and things that are being uh, done in terms of what we can train, all kinds of seminars we can do. We should absolutely do them. Uh, trying to integrate that or have some mandate from the U.S. federal government, I think, is just a step too far. Obviously, there are, there are harms that exist on the Internet. But again, these are extensions of things that happen in real life. You know, what, we mentioned cyberbullying. Well, that is bullying. Uh, we know this. This is a trope that is in our culture. It's something that everyone who went to high school understands. And there are different reasons that people might be picked on. Uh, just because things elevate to the digital realm doesn't mean all of a sudden some, some kind of platform is going to be able to stop it. Uh, we just need to have much more parental supervision and responsibility. I think what we're doing is we're abdicating a lot of that responsibility when we say we just want some kind of national bill passed by Congress or the Senate uh, or even our state legislatures. And, and I think that's just creating a lot of bad incentives. We've become too dependent on these larger institutions to try to tell us how to parent our children, and we're not really making our own efforts. And, and there are great educational tools, again, that by both panelists here that provide great information, and I think people should use them, parents should use them, uh, but we should not try to uh, try to ratchet down all of our social media websites, because again, the vast majority of people who use these are adult consumers who are using them professionally, personally, or otherwise. Uh, if we're only going to try to make these for adults, uh, then we're, again, we're just kind of separating kids and we're creating a Chinese wall so that they're not going to be able to learn, they're not going to be able to experiment, they're not going to be able to have the same tools and technologies that I had growing up. And we're in an online international battle now for AI, for innovation. I, I would rather that our American kids be prepared and ready for that than not prepared.